The highest art of warfare is not to fight at all, but to subvert anything of value in the country of your enemy until such time that the perception of reality of your enemy is screwed up to such an extent that he does not perceive you as an enemy and that your system, your civilization and your ambitions look to your enemy as an alternative, if not desirable, then at least feasible. Better red than dead. That's the ultimate purpose the final stage of subversion, after which you can simply take your enemy without a single shot being fired, if the subversion is successful. This is basically what subversion is. The basics of subversion are, is being taught to every student of KGB school in USSR and to officers of, of military academies. What subversion is? Basically, it consists of four periods Time-wise, the first stage of subversion is the process which is called, basically, demoralization. It says for itself what it is. It takes from, um, say, 15 to 20 years to demoralize a society. Why, why 15 or 20 years? This is the time sufficient to educate one generation of students or children. One generation, one lifetime span of a person, a human being, which is dedicated to study, to shaping up the outlook, ideology, personality. No more, no less. Usually it takes from 15 to 20 years. What it includes? It includes influencing or by various methods, infiltration, uh, propaganda methods, direct contacts, doesn't really matter. I will describe them later. <laughs> of various areas where public opinion is formulated or shaped. On the stage of demoralization, obviously there are tendencies in each society, in each country, which are going to opposite direction from the basic moral values and principles, to take advantage of these movements, to capitalize on them, is the main purpose of the originator of subversion. So we have religion, we have education, we have uh, social life, we have power structure, we have labor relations, uh, unions, and finally we have law and order. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? These are the areas of application of subversion. The next step is destabilization. Again, this word says for itself what it is. To destabilize all the relations, all the accepted institutions and organizations in a country of your enemy. How you do it? You don't have to send up a battalion of KGB agents to blow up bridges. No. You let them do it themselves. The area of application is again, it's, it's, it's narrower now. Not like the, the previous case. The overt legitimate actions of the, of the KGB in this case would be ha hardly noticeable. There is no crime if a professor who recently went to USSR introduces a course of Marxism-Leninism in, in a, a, a Californian college, for example. Nobody is going to, to come to his doorstep and say, okay, mister, come, you are under arrest. No, it's not a crime. It's not even considered a moral crime against your country. The area of application here is narrowing down to ec economy, again, labor relations, right, to law and order. plus military, and uh, economy, law and order, yes, and again the uh, media destabilization uh, process usually leads directly to the process of crisis. In case of developing nations, that's the area where I, I was active, the process starts when 
when the legitimate bodies of power, the social structure collapse, it's, it cannot function anymore. So instead, we have artificial body injected into society, such as non-elected committees. You remember I was talking about them here. Social workers who are not elected by people, media who, self, who are self-appointed rulers of your opinion, uh, some strange groups uh, which claim that they know how to lead society forward. They don't usually. All they care is how to collect the nations and, and, prom and sell their own concocted ideology, mixture of religion and ideology. Here, we have all this artificial body claiming power. If the power is denied to them, they take it by force. In case of Iran, for example, all of a sudden we have revolutionary committees. Who? What, what kind of revolution? There was no revolution yet, and yet they had the committees. They were taking power of, of judgment. They had, they had the power of execution, they had the power of, of uh, le legislation, and that they had the power of, of uh, judicial. Uh, all of them combined in one person, who is half-baked intellectual, sometimes graduated from Harvard University or, or Berkeley. He comes back to his country and, and he, he thinks that he, he knows the answer to all the social economical problems. Crisis is when society cannot function any more productively. It collapses, obviously. That's the, the word for crisis. So therefore, the population at large is looking for a savior. The religious groups are expecting a messiah to come. The workers say, we have family to feed. Let's have a strong government, maybe socialist government, centralized. When, when somebody put, put their employers on their place and, and let us work, we are sick and tired of going to strike and, and missing overtime and all that stuff. We need some strong man, strong government, a leader, a savior is needed. Population is sick and tired already. And here we are, we have a savior. Either a foreign nation comes in, or the local group of, of leftists, Marxists, no matter what they call themselves, Sandinista, a reverend or some sort, Bishop Muzureva, like in, in Zimbabwe, doesn't matter. A savior comes and says, I will lead you. So we have two alternatives here. Civil war. An invasion. Okay? See how it goes? Civil war, we know what it is. Lebanon is, is the best example. The civil war, which was artificially implanted in Lebanon by injection of force of PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization. Invasion, we have in many other countries like Afghanistan, uh, and name any East European country, it, it was invaded by the Soviet army. But the result is this. The next stage is normalization. Normalization is a very ironic word, of course. It is borrowed from 1968 situation in Czechoslovakia, when the Soviet propaganda and after them, New York Times declared the country is normalized. The tanks moved into Prague, so there is no more Prague Spring, there is no more violence. Normal. Normalization. At that stage, the self-appointed rulers of the society don't need any revolution anymore. They don't need any radicalism anymore. So, this is the reverse from destabilization. Basically, it is stabilizing the country by force. So all the sleepers and activists and social workers and liberals and homosexuals and professors and Marxists and Leninists are being eliminated physically sometimes. They've done their job already. Okay? They are not needed anymore. The new rulers need stability to exploit the nation, to exploit the country, to take advantages of the victory. Okay? So no more revolutionaries, please. And that's exactly what happens in a number of countries. 
You remember Bangladesh? This is the crisis in which I was instrumental. First, they had Mujibur Rahman. In 1971, he was the leader of, of People's Party, Awami League, with mustache like Stalin. He was in, in, in Russia many times. In five years, he was shot by his former colleagues, Marxists. He fulfilled his function. In Afghanistan, it happened three times. First there was Taraki, then there was Amin, now there's Babra Karmal. They killed each other successively, one after another. The moment he fulfills his duty, the first one demoralized country, the second destabilized, the third one brought it to crisis. Goodbye, comrades. <laughs> Babra Karmal comes from Moscow and put in, in, into the seat of power. Same thing happened in Grenada recently. Maurice Bishop, Marxist, was killed by Austin, what's his name, General something who was also a Marxist, right? So no more revolutions, please. Normalization now. From now on, no more strikes, no more homosexuals, no more women lib, no more kid lib, no more lib, period. <laughs> For good, solid, democratic, proletarian freedom. <laughs> That's it. Now, to reverse this process takes enormous effort. When today, United States had to invade Grenada to reverse the process of subversion. Some people say, boy, this is not good, it's not kosher to invade the beautiful country, island of Grenada. <laughs> well, why didn't you stop the process here, when Grenada was just approached by leftists? Why not to prevent Maurice Bishop to come in power in the first place? Did Grenadians want him? Very questionable. They didn't know who was Maurice Bishop in the first place. He came to power by coup d'etat himself. Okay? No, we let the situation develop further and further and further until the crisis and normalization very soon. And then the United States decided to invade country, discovering that the, the country was absolutely a military base for the Soviet Union. Of course, it's a drastic measure. Of course, it's, it's a pity that uh, Marine Corps had to, to lose, what, 17 lives. Very bad. Why not to stop the process before it comes to crisis? Oh, no, intellectuals will not let you. It's interference into, into domestic affairs. They are very careful not to, not, not to let American administration to interfere in domestic affairs of Latin American countries. They don't mind Soviet Union interfering in these affairs. <laughs> Okay. So to reverse this process, from here, it takes only and always military force. No other force on earth can reverse this process at this point. At this point, it does not take military invasion of the United States Army. It takes strong action, like in Chile. A CIA covert involvement to prevent the savior from outside to come into power and to stabilize country before it erupts into civil war. Okay? Support the right-wing conservative forces. Buy money, buy crooks or love, doesn't matter. Stabilize the country. Don't let the crisis develop into, into civil war or invasion. Oh no, your liberals will say it's, it's against the law. <laughs> the Congress will not appropriate money for covert actions of CIA. Why not? Should we wait till the normalization come and Soviet tanks land in, in, in Los Angeles airport? 